a lot of people that have looked at this two-stage weaning talk about, well, you know, you want to reduce the stress of weaning, now you're running them through the chute. And it's, yeah, I know I'm running through the chute, but that's not as stressful as giving them four days trying to overcome weaning stress. What are some different methods for I guess reduce stress weaning. Well, some of the common ways to reduce the stress are uh, now we, you know, about fence line weaning, where we put the cows and calves right adjacent to each other, and then they can see each other. And I, I know it sounds like a lot of commotion, but uh, and some people say, oh, if you get them as far away from each other, they're less stressed because they can't see each other, and they forget about each other. But, but actually, when you do that, you're just hearing half the equation, and and out of sight. Uh, it actually stimulates them to look for each other more and they actually vocalize and call more and, they're, and they really are more distressed than if they can sit next to each other. You see a lot less milling around. Uh, they'll come to the fence to, to try to make contact then lie down, get up, maybe eat or graze. And that's a really good technique. And especially if it's done on grass, on pasture, where the cattle are used to grazing, and you can set it up where the calves have access to, to sort of fresh grass, you'll find they'll just move away and you get good gain and, and really good reduced stress. The other way, we've worked on that years ago, and now we're, we sort of moved on and we're looking at this two-stage weaning, which we, from our data, looks like it's even better in the sense that you're, you're actually weaning the calves in full contact in the presence of their mother. And you put the tags in, these anti-sucking tags, and what that does, it, it, like I said, it allows them the contact, so they're not trying to call and reunite, they are united. And over a course of four to five days, their dependency and their, and their attempts to look for milk disappear and they're essentially weaned. So then after that period of time, you separate them and they just go right on. You're hearing some calves in the background here, and that's, we just did this two-stage weaning, and you always get a few cheaters, and you get a few calves that lose their tags. And if, and if you watch this group long enough, you'd see it's the same calf that's making all the noise, and inevitably it's the calf that had either lost its tag or been cheat, learned how to cheat. And there's what a- do they, What do they do to learn to cheat? They, in our opinion, I guess our experience is the longer you leave them in, the more uh, adept they get at manipulating them and flipping them around. And they probably get a little bit looser over time too because there's a little pressure necrosis in the nose and so they get sloppier. And, and if, you, if you let these calves wear them for say like a week where they get really good at it, then they seem to learn they can flip them and if they see one nursing, they tend to go over and try it and all of a sudden they can get back on. They may not get much milk, but they sort of re reunite that bond and, and, and they sort of become dependent on, on trying to nurse again. So our advice always is to keep it short. Five days is probably better than seven days and beyond that, I know people do it, it's not a good, it's not the best option. Uh, five days they will essentially be weaned and, it, and it's, it seems like about the right amount of time. Does it take very long for a producer to put those tags in the noses? You know, your first one, is, it's a bit clumsy, <laughs> yeah. but you know, we can put them in and take them out in, in just seconds, really. Okay. It, and, and so you'll have to run the critters through twice. You do, we have to, and, and that seems a bit bizarre for people. It depends on how much work that is for you to get them in, into the chute. Uh, we've got a system that we think is, is ideal for sorting cows and calves, and it makes the process really simple. So for us to sort cows and calves from each other here takes us relatively little amount of time and we run them through the chute, put the tags in. We also vaccinate them. We might do ear tagging or, or uh, a weighing or something, that, another chore that we were gonna do in the fall anyway. We couple it with that, we put the tags in, and then we do, we put them back together. Five days later, we collect them all, run them, sort them again, run them through, and then permanently separate them. And uh, we get good results. We get gains, even while they're wearing a the nose tag, these calves are still gaining some weight. Not as much as if they were nursing, of course, but they're gaining weight out on grass because they can eat. And then 
that week after separation, we see gains. These calves are eating and going right on. And, and in the abrupt, their traditional way of separating and weaning calves, we see calves just either flat lining or actually losing weight that first week. They're just, they're just so distressed and looking for, for mom, especially the three or four day, first days. Eventually, they, you know, they pick it up. Uh, and over a month, you know, you couldn't see the difference between these two in, in weight gain. But it's a question of how stressful is it and what does it do to their immune system uh, by going off feed for three or four days. That's, that's sort of the issue. What does one of those tanks cost? Really? You know, it depends on where you get them. They should be around $2 a piece, something like that. Not much more. And of course, you can reuse them. You use them every year. They, they're plastic. You can uh, wash them and disinfect them and put them in again. You can get years of use out of them. It's, uh, I, it, I haven't looked at what they are in the store shelf for a while, but $2 is sort of what we, earlier what we thought they were about, 2 to $3, I'm guessing, I don't know. Are there different options in, in terms of what they look like? And yeah, there's a whole bunch of varieties out there. When we first started our research, we found some devices that we actually got from Argentina and had a lot of spikes on them. And they were using them there because the, the cows were getting pulled down lactation and weren't rebreeding. So they were putting these things on just to sort of stop the, stop the lactation for a bit or nursing, would sort of give them a boost and a flush and they would conceive. And then they were taken out and they weren't using them as a, as a weaning process, just as sort of a temporary way of getting the cows to, to cycle. Uh, and so we got them from Arch. They had spikes all over them. And, you know, and the idea of the spikes was that it was going to keep them, the cows would sort of help kick them off, right? If they felt those spikes. And, you know, our experience with them was that the spikes aren't that functional. They, they look wicked. But you, and you can look at YouTubes and you'll see calves wearing these things and the farmer's kind of showing what you're going to see. And the calf, even in some of these YouTubes, they're just rooting underneath the udder and the cow's very tolerant of that, even with the spikes. It's like they know it's their calf, they're willing to let them try, regardless of them bumping. And so I don't think the spikes really function as far as helping them kick the calf off. I don't see that. Uh, and we did a little study trying to work with smooth ones, wondering whether the spikes would help cut down on cheaters, you know, and what we found is that the spikes wound up pulling more of the tag. We lost a higher percentage of tags with those spike devices. So if they're bringing the calves through a couple of times, yep. um, just putting those pieces in isn't going to reduce stress 100%. So what other strategies do we have that we can manage that? Well, I think calves, you know, if you're going to put them on some kind of feed, if you can start them on feed, the, the same kind of feed with the cows in the presence of the cows, they'll start easier. That'll be one thing that won't be from unfamiliar to them then it won't be a novel uh, food and the same with the environment where you're going to where you're going to house them if you can give them access to the place that they're going to be weaned and bring the cows and calves together in that area and then remove the cows that's better too but you know one of the things that happen like stress what makes stress so bad is when you have multiple stressors heaped on top of each other uh, one stressor alone you can sort of handle. If you get two stressors, three stressors, four stressors, then that's harder on your system. And, and that, you know, it's true for people. It's true, you know, we have students that show up at a new place with new friends, with a new house, with, a, you know, and, and all that kind of stuff. And no surprise, they get sick. But if they just had, you know, one thing new at a time, you can probably handle it. And that's what we see when calves go to the feedlot. You know, they're weaned the same day, they're trucked. They're in a new environment, they're on new feed, they're in a new social group. All of those things together just help tip the balance in getting sick. It's not like those pathogens magically showed up that day. It's just that now they succumb to them often. And, and they're, of course, in the feedlot, probably exposed to some new bugs that they haven't seen. But uh, calves can get sick at home, too, if you abruptly wean them, whereas this, we see very little incidence of sickness when we do this, this two-stage weaning. In terms of sorting, how did you guys manage that yesterday? We have a, a device, I guess, or a technique that we use that was adopted from something that Dylan Biggs had showed us, talked about years ago, and that is where you have a a, uh, a pen that you intend to put the calves into and you sort of let the cows walk past that pen and if you pull a couple rails off 
the bottom, or we have a gate that's actually set about this high. It's set a little higher than the shoulder of the calf, but it's lower than the shoulder of a cow. And the cows, and, and it's just like you know if you're gonna hit your head. You know how to duck, and the cows are the same way. Now, if you really put pressure, the cows would duck underneath them. But if you're just giving them the start of this easy walk, they'll take the easier path. And so the trick is to let the cows walk that easy path and stop a calf. And so it's option to try to follow the cows to duck under that rail and walk down the fence line. So they can walk with each other parallel, walk behind you, and they get out of your way. And it's really cool, because if you have gates, if you're saying, oh, we'll open the gate, we'll put cows in here and calves in there. If you've ever done that, you know it works initially okay, but eventually you're open the gate to get some more in and some are coming out. And it's like, oh, you chase those back. You know, and, and it's just this, and every time you're swinging gates, you're stopping the process. You're slowing it down, because you're getting this startle response. And uh, I, it's a fun process just to, just to you know, everybody that moves, works with cattle enjoys sort of that cutting because there's a little finesse to it and it's it's just a neat challenge to see cows come by you and to stop a calf but let a cow go by and it's done by just this subtle little hesitant move timing your move with a calf's move and they see it they'll stop and the cows will just keep flowing by because they're just a little less fearful of you probably than a calf and, and you can let cows kind of bunch up there. You don't have to worry about them. They're not coming through and just let the cows drift by. Eventually those cows will, will see that opening and they'll duck underneath. It's a, it's a, it's a really slick technique. Uh, it doesn't require many people either. No, you just need somebody kind of in the back giving you a little pressure or a dog or something. You're just kind of moving them up, coaxing them to you. You don't want too much pressure because then you'll, you'll be dipping. Cows will dip underneath. They're trying to escape the pressure from the back and seeing you in the front. You just want that sort of that walk by thing and the less you move the more easier it works uh, because you, you're not stopping these cows they're seeing one cow is seeing another cow having successfully passed you and then they'll try it so it's 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 fun you know I, I, I have always enjoyed cutting cows and calves uh, growing up it's just such a kind of a neat challenge but this it's just so slick and smooth I love it it's great